Rahmatullah. Well, here we are with your event. There's no secrets. We're at the Sahara Grill here in East London at the Al Noor fundraising evening. As you can see, I've got my best gear on tonight because tonight is a special evening. We've got celebrities, we've got local businessmen, and we're here to make a difference. And our audience are people who are here to make a difference tonight. A difference to the Muslim community and a difference to the local community here in East London. Come in and join us for a fantastic evening tonight. Side now the event is warming up I tell you what I got some lovely canapes here as you might have seen very tasty indeed it is a fantastic event oops the Islam Channel team is all here I've been briefed we're gonna be raising money tonight for some fantastic causes really really making a big impact in this local community to what has become an established iconic member of the East London community Al Nurul Islam we've got our Islam Channel team and they're all a bit camera shy they don't like speaking on the camera but they're here they've been here all day setting up our VIP guests are arriving I can see lots and lots of very familiar faces, familiar faces to you guys as well. Let's hope it's going to be a good night. Before the evening even started, we managed to find out more about the event from the leader and the visionary behind Nural Islam Trust, Yusuf Hansa. You're a familiar face on Islam Channel. We know you very well. We know your institution very well. You must be very excited about tonight. Very excited. Believe me. Uh, this is the first time we are doing a, a business dinner. First time. Let's hope Allah makes it goes well. And you are here, and everyone is here. Inshallah, it will. I'm sure. Inshallah. I mean, Al Noor has become an institution in this part of London. I mean, if we look at the poster behind us here, Noor al Islam. Look at this. There's masjid. There's the primary school, the preschool, toddlers group, youth group, women's group, madrasa, alim, a scouts group. I mean, it goes on. I mean, it really is more than just a masjid, isn't it? It is more than a masjid. We we just follow the example of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. During his time, the Medina Munawwara was not just uh, a prayer place where everything else was going on. We tried to follow that uh, step. Make Allah make, make it will happen. It will happen. The event began with a beautiful recitation of the Quran by none other than Sheikh Abu Bakr al Shatari. Sheikh Abu Bakr is a world renowned Quran reciter. He's currently the Imam of the Al Furqan Masjid in Jeddah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء قدير إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار صدق الله العظيم After the recitation, a number of different speakers talked about the importance of having an institution like Nur al-Islam within their local community. I invite myself first and invite all of you tonight that inshallah we contribute to this great project. I just came back from abroad tonight, to, tonight but that I had to come 
If Yusuf Hansa says, come, I have no other option but to say, yes, sir, I'll come. So tonight, he's asking us to pay money. And every one of you, inshallah, we have to contribute to that project. And I pray that Allah gives me life to pray in that mosque, inshallah. We bought it at auction. You know, at auction, many businessmen are here. You pay the deposit of 10%, and then the remaining you have to pay in 20, 28 days. What happened now? The next morning, believe it or not, you believe it, you don't, but I've got to... The, the solicitors, their solicitors, sent a letter. Oh, uh, dear sir, we would like you to extend that completion date. Not two weeks. We asked for, two, for I think, three weeks. The reason being, it was in Christ, during Christmas time. Ramadan was during uh, Christmas. And these people like to have holiday Christmas. Look, I'll, now we said, oh, we have plenty more time to collect but Allah made it on the 29th of Ramadan, we had all the money. As a young girl growing up in the UK, you tend to latch on to different role models from different times, you know, so as singers and actresses, one of the girls from the Gladiators at one point, and it was, it was always, but Khadija Allah, was always the one who stuck with me from the age of seven through my childhood. Um, a, a very wealthy woman, she was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's boss, uh, and an uh, employer and a very successful businesswoman. It was actually said, not many people know this, it was actually said that on her wedding night to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that her gift to him, so her, she gave him a gift, her gift to him was a bag of gold so huge that they couldn't see each other over it, right? And that, that was how wealthy they were. But she died without a, a single coin in her possession because she used all of her wealth to support the early Muslim Ummah. The architect for Nur al-Islam's new project, Umer Wahid, gave the audience the ins and outs of the new building with the help of a 3D animated video. Uh, this obviously is the external coming up to the, to, the, to the building and we wanted to make it an iconic building. It must be something that talks about Islam and our identity very much as members of this community. So you won't find the traditional, wall, what, what we describe as wallpaper, Islamic architecture. You know, we've tried to reinterpret a lot of Islamic features, but you can identify it as a mosque. There's a mushrubiya screen, suspended glazing assembly, and then at the entrance you have these glass doors and suspended glass assembly. To the right you have, well to the middle you actually have the advice center. This is the nerve center of the, of, of the whole building. In here you have the reception, you have the offices, you have other facilities on the right. When we come back down, this, you'll see that there is a cafe. On the left, there's a bookshop. And behind the, the drum, there is actually a, a preschool uh, facility, a nursery facility. We're just going up the steps now, and we're going to go now to the first floor, which takes us to the prayer hall. And what we've done is we've tried to integrate the issue of shoes. Shoes is always an issue. It's always an afterthought in a building. We've actually integrated it into the wall. So it actually becomes a bit of a feature. It's actually lit from behind as well. And this element takes us to the main entrance of the prayer hall, the men's prayer hall. And inside here, if you look at the roof, you can see that it's a structural, well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's actually a coffered slab. It's a structural slab, a flat concrete, flat concrete slab, but we've made it a coffered slab, which basically means we've introduced some Islamic geometry even into the ceiling, just by using the rear, raw concrete itself. And then we come through, and you can see the mushrubiya in the front, and then this acoustic screen, which separates the masjid area from the noisy street. We've actually created this baffled screen. And then we're coming back out now from the, the main prayer hall. And then we're going to climb back up to the main, main entrance stairs. But we've created a lot of glass and a lot of light in this building. Some masjids are very, very dark. So we wanted to create a lot of light and ambience. So you'll find that there is quite a lot of glazing but we're going to create a silk screen on the glazing, so there'll be a lot of Islamic geometry, actually at every, at every aspect of this, of this building. We want it to be an inspirational building that really lifts and hopefully reflects the aspirations of our community. We're now going up to the sisters' floor. The sister have, sisters have their own floor entirely at the second floor. And basically there is a mother and toddler's room, there's a separate gym, there are showers, 
changing facilities for the sisters, dedicated facilities, and, a, and also obviously a prayer hall. The prayer hall itself is actually quite interesting because it's a double height space and above it you have the actual lantern of the, or the, the, the dome, which itself is partly glazed. Allahu Akbar, let us praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Takbir! We have half, half the carpet is taken. 12 and a half thousand pounds each to make this carpet a reality. We have 25,000. We need two people now who can raise their hand at 12 and a half thousand pounds, inshallah. After the fundraising, we spoke to the local business community who were present at the venue about what they thought about being part of this great project and why it was really important for the Muslim community here in the UK. I tell you what, this is the favourite type of event that I like to go to. I get invited to loads of different things, but it's the ones that where it's the heart of the community and you can tell every single person in this room wants the best for this community, you know, and what better way to do that than to like give generously to Noor Islam. And you were one of our speakers tonight, and something that you said, which was which was very touching, a, you a said very that you've always been inspired by Khadija radiallahu anha, and you now boss, are a businesswoman uh, just and, like she and, was. Uh, Tell us why she was such an inspiration system. to you. To me, she embodied everything that's great about being a Muslim. So she was the first Muslim, let's let's be real about that. But she was a, not only an incredible businesswoman, so she would have been a billionaireess in today's terms, had she been around, the amount of wealth that she had. But the thing that really moves me every single time is that she died without a single coin to her name. Some of the best philanthropists in this world, Bill Gates Foundation, etc., still have money for themselves. But she, she, gave, she gave everything away that she had so that she didn't have a coin in her position when she met her creator. And that's something that I, it's, just, it's just incredible for me. And for a woman in that time as well, with all of the barriers and things that she would have had, a widow, a mother, a wife, all of those barriers, and she still managed to do that. I mean, how can you not be moved by someone like that? Nurul Islam has a particular emphasis, as well as, of course, the madrasa, as well as the school, as well as the masjid. They have a particular emphasis on reaching out to give a good impression to the non-Muslim community and be a place that non-Muslims feel comfortable about coming to access. How important is it for us as a community to, to foster and encourage these relationships? Well, we live in a larger society, and as Muslims, we have a faith, we have a religion, and we are ordered and commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we spread this religion and pass the message on to these people. And one of the best ways is not to feel alien to them, we have to be part of them, uh, of course without losing our religion, so we can pass on our faith to them. I think the architecture of the building now, it, it looks part of the environment, is part of the architecture surrounding it. And I think it's uh, also it will provide non-Muslims with easy access. So people, they don't hesitate to come in. So they are coming in for other activities. I can see there is coffee shop and, and uh, other activities inside the building. Alhamdulillah, that's great, inshallah. I'm here with Brother Tamkeen Riyaz from the Muslim Association of Croydon. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Mureen. How are you? Very good. Alhamdulillah. Now, I mean, you guys in Croydon have done a similar thing in many ways. Started from a very small institution. It's built up over the years. It must be very heartening for you to be here tonight to see something like this happening in East London. Such an important institution. Absolutely, because this is for the whole of the community. It's not just a masjid. It is everything that our youth needs. I am second generation. My children are third generation. And mashallah, alhamdulillah, I've got grandchildren so I can see the benefits of this project long term for generations to come. I think sometimes when people look at the situation of our youth sometimes it's easy to blame the youth and think you know they're off the rails they're not listening but without institutions like this really where are they going to turn I mean this is so vital isn't it for our, as you said for our children and for our grandchildren. Alhamdulillah yes absolutely because at the end of the day where can they go for halal activities? If, they don't, if we don't provide halal activities for them, they are going to go to non-halal activities. So, you know, having your gymnasium there, swimming pool, snooker, all everything they want in a halal environment for both boys and girls. I'm here now with Brother Tahir Razak, one of the owners of Sahara Grill. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Tahir. Assalamu Tell me, why was it important for you, as a local businessman here, to be a part of this event? I mean, you've chosen, normally people would go to a big function hall, but you've chosen this very beautiful venue here, your restaurant, to host the fundraising for Nur al-Islam. 
Alhamdulillah, all our children they go to Nur Islam school. We was my Nur Islam is our local masjid. So Alhamdulillah, it's a pleasure to, to help them out. Assalamu alaikum, brother Asif. Wa alaikum salam, brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah, very well. Thank you for joining us here tonight. I mean, we've heard about this fantastic project. In many respects, you know, we've heard about the people coming from kindergarten all the way up until the Janaza facilities. And of course, that's where you guys often get involved. It must be inspiring to see an organization like Nur al-Islam taking people from the cradle all the way to the grave. Alhamdulillah, I'm privileged. And with the du'as of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the community, um, this project I've been uh, heading for a year now. And it's in its early days, uh, but mashallah, we've managed to bury over 70 loved ones there and uh, over 300 people have pre-purchased. It's a 55-acre site in a beautiful woodlands, uh, natural virgin land. It's beautiful, mashallah. You know, reaching the end of life and our relatives giving them a dignified end is such a beautiful thing. And you have this beautiful facility. How important do you think it is for an organization like Nur al-Islam to have the wudu, not sorry, the janaza facilities that they're building there at the moment? MashaAllah, I do really admire that and I, and I wish every mosque had that opportunity uh, to do what they're doing and I think the state of the art system they're going to be putting in is going to make it very easy for us um, so when the janaza is washed at the mosque and stored for us to bury um, the next day or even the same day at Eternal Gardens. Yep. Alhamdulillah, so a good partnership coming together. Your business with Noor al-Islam, Alhamdulillah, helping the Muslim community. It has been an amazing evening here tonight at Sahara Grill with Nurul Islam. What you see on a night like tonight is you see the Muslim community waking up. By the mercy of Allah, our forefathers came here and they built places for us to pray. But we can see the way our communities are growing, that places to pray are no longer enough. We need places where we can come to socialize. We need places where we can bring our children. We need places where our boys and our girls are safe to enjoy themselves and will keep away from the dangers that they find sometimes on the streets. We need places where we can look after our dead and bury them with dignity. We need places where we can nurture our communities from the cradle all the way to the grave. That is what Noor Islam is building here. And we're seeing more projects like this spring up around the country. I would say to everyone who is watching here today, wherever your local community is, find the mosque, find the community that is growing, that is trying to do something like this, and speak to Noor Islam. Ask them about how they got this started. Ask them about what inspired them, because we can repeat this model around the country. Noor Islam is something that is going to be a legacy for us. It's going to be an institution for our children and for our grandchildren. It's something that's going to reach out to Muslim and and non-Muslim alike and help us to fulfill that very, very simple command from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be the best, to be those who bring the most benefit to others. That's what Nur al-Islam is about inshallah. We hope you enjoyed being with us on your event. For now, Assalamu Alaikum.